This building has been constructed in the shape of a question mark, and that's a clue to what goes on here. Harperley Hall in Durham is a state-of-the-art teaching centre. Here, students learn the skills required to become a crime scene investigator. Footwear marks are the most common type of evidence found at crime scenes. Unique patterns of wear and scuffing make it possible to match even part of a print to an individual shoe, rather like a fingerprint. Footwear marks are found at around half of all crime scenes. That's a lot of valuable information to be collected and preserved. Ian Wilson is the CSI school's footprint expert. Today's lesson involves a mock-up of a burglary. Noticing there's some papers on the floor there, so that would be an area that I would consider searching for the possibility of latent prints on that newspaper. Potentially, there could be a hidden mark on there in dust, so what I'll use is an Esler machine to actually lift the dust in the hope that I make that mark a lot more visible to us. Place the electrodes on the earthing plate. The Esla stands for Electrostatic Lifting Apparatus. The technique involves placing a foil sheet over the suspected print and using electrical charges to attract dust particles. If you knock the lights off... By shining a white light at an angle, we can see a print. Straight away, we've got a really clear imprint. Although some footwear marks are easier to see than the one on the newspaper, it doesn't mean they're easier to collect as evidence. Ian takes me outside to the grounds of the CSI school, where a shoe print has been found, which could be connected to the burglary. So a completely different type of print this, so how would you lift this one? This being a three-dimensional print, it's got depth to it. Rather than lift it, we'll need to take a cast of it. Part of the CSI's portable kit is a casting powder. Water is added, then it's poured onto the footprint. Floor down into the mark. It's then labelled and left to set. I don't want to cause any damage to it at this stage. So to protect it, we'll just put it in this box. We've got our footwear evidence from the crime scenes. Now it's off to the lab to see how it can help us. Police have recovered a pair of training shoes from a suspect, but are they a match to our prints? Surely thousands of people would have a trainer like that. Indeed, there will be thousands of uh, training shoes, pretty much the same as this. So what we'll be looking at is not only the pattern type, but we'll be looking at the size, um, areas of wear within the sole. Ultimately, we'll be looking for identifying features, which would be nicks and cuts within the sole area. You can see that there is actually quite a substantial nick. Ian has made a copy of the suspect's shoe. By placing it over photos of the prints found in the mud and on the newspaper, he can compare the images. Straight away, you can see that this uh, matches up very, very nicely. A look at the cast confirms the shoe was at the scene of the crime. Another tool available to the CSI is footwear intelligence technology a database which contains thousands of shoe patterns, images and brand logos. So Ian, this is great, but what happens if a suspect says, yeah, so what if you got the shoes on me? They're not mine, I just borrowed them from a mate. OK, well what we do there is something called Cinderella analysis. Here we have an example of an insole from a shoe and you can see here quite clearly where each toe lies within that shoe and that's what makes us able to put the person back into the shoe. That can be as unique as a fingerprint. The distinctive impressions on the insole didn't form overnight. These shoes have been worn regularly by the same person. A criminal will often commit many crimes wearing the same pair of shoes. So footwear analysis can help solve several crimes at once. As CSI technology gets more sophisticated, even the smallest mark left behind by a shoe can help lead police to the door of a criminal. Nowhere to hide, really, is there, Rav? And if you, even if you bin your shoes, that doesn't mean you're in the clear. Not at all, and that's exactly what happened in a big case in Manchester just a couple of years ago. There was a big murder inquiry, and uh, a suspect was quickly arrested for the crime, but police were really struggling with getting the evidence in order to charge him. Yeah. He was evading all the questions, they went round to his flat, there was no evidence there. They searched the crime scene, there was a blood-stained footprint there, so that was crucial. In his flat, there was no shoes, it looked like he'd binned them. But what they did do is they took a latent print, which is what we just saw from the film there, where they actually extracted a footprint that's invisible to the naked eye, got this print, matched it up with the bloodstained one at the crime scene. It was a direct hit, and he's uh, now serving 38 years in prison for the murder.